The state of opioid use in the country right now is something that is on the front page of the newspaper every day, it's something that a lot of people are aware of, and the numbers really are staggering. Opioid overdose deaths have more than quadrupled since 1999, according to the CDC, uh, and about half of those in the most recent data that, that have come out are from overdoses of prescription opioids as opposed to heroin or illegal fentanyl that, that's out there. What is unique about opioid use is that it does have a real legitimate medical purpose in, in the treatment of pain, which is very important and, and used to be an undertreated condition. The goal of, of regulating opioids is, is not to prevent the sale and distribution full stop. It's to allow for patients who legitimately need to use an opioid to treat their pain to access the medication but while preventing people who are abusing the medication or diverting the medication from accessing it. The way in which the, the DEA regulates the distribution of legal products such as opioids is through the Controlled Substances Act. The Controlled Substances Act requires that distributors of controlled substances such as opioids identify and report suspicious orders. Suspicious orders under this act are defined as orders of unusual size, unusual frequency, or orders deviating from a normal pattern. In general, the DEA requires effective controls against diversion, which includes suspicious order monitoring for distributors of these drugs, but also includes tracking certain red flags that the DEA has put into its guidelines for pharmacies, prescribers, and others who are involved in the prescription and dispensing of these drugs. The biggest challenge for using data for controlled substance monitoring is that the data are not all in one place. You have the DEA, manufacturers, distributors, pharmacy chains, even individual independent pharmacies, physicians, and providers, all of whom have different pieces of the puzzle, but none of which can see everything that all the other players can see. What makes that difficult is that although each of those levels in the supply chain has the burden of trying to do what it can, they're all making decisions based on incomplete information and trying to do the best they can, but could do better if they were able to see what these, uh, those other levels have visible to them. At the time when you're making the decision about whether or not something is suspicious, you don't have the benefit of hindsight. It's easier to look back and, and try to point out orders that might be suspicious. But in the moment when you're trying to make that decision, you have limited information, and so you have to try to work with the data that you have available to do the best you can to distinguish between the legitimate orders and the suspicious orders. And so while it's difficult at the point of any single prescription to determine whether any of those red flags is a concern, in the aggregate, looking back over months or years at the pattern of data for a pharmacy, we've been able to help clients distinguish between what really looks like a consistent red flag in the dispensing of a drug versus the kind of data anomalies that'll, that'll happen in, in any data set that you'll look at. Another challenge that we face whenever we're working on designing an algorithm that manages risk is the balance between sensitivity and specificity. At one extreme, the most sensitive algorithm possible would simply block every order of opioids. The other extreme, we might block one order a year that we were really, really sure was a sp suspicious order that ought to be stopped. In between, there's a huge gray area of trying to define what that right balance is. Something that Analysis Group has done for our clients is to develop dashboards that'll present the same analytics in the same format for whichever regular decision is being made based on an order or a customer. For example, it'll tell you why did an order flag as suspicious? What does this customer look like relative to similar customers? What's going on with other drugs for this customer? And in doing that, we're able to make sure that the client is applying their topic expertise without worrying about which type of analysis or calculation they should be doing each time they're facing that decision.